Hi, I'm Katie Tamblin, and welcome back to EcoDove. Today we're going to be talking about our connection to the land and how it shapes our view of what it is to be sustainable, starting with my family farm. This place has so many memories for me. It's a, it's a really special place where I grew up spending my weekends and my summers and my holidays um, fishing and running wild and chasing snakes and um, watching birds, um, hunting with my dad, and, uh, and just being a feral child. <laughs> and I love coming back here now with my children and encouraging them to run wild and explore, um, do farm chores and, uh, and experience life um, in the rural south of America. We are at a family property in Greene County that was put together by my husband's father in the 30s and 40s, piecemeal, and uh, it's a, a nature retreat as well as a timber farm. I have the high areas are in pine predominantly, and then the, the lowlands or the bottoms or in hick the hickory oak forests that are native to this area and they're protected mm -hmm. that those will never be encroached upon well in my lifetime anyway mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of the feed for the wildlife is the acorns for the turkeys and the insect life that supports the bird populations but when i first came here with my husband uh, we were not married, and I could. We came down to this property, and I think I just sensed what it meant to him, because of the connection he had to the land and to his father through it. And we, we actually came to this very cabin, and he told me the story about the cabin being built out of one pine tree, which I'm not sure is the truth, but. <laughs> Makes a good story. It makes a great story, and it, it very well could have been the truth. I mean, it's possible. And it's still standing just as sturdily as it can be today, which is amazing. However, I laugh and say there's not a right angle in it, meaning <laughs> that if you put a marble in the middle of the floor, it's going to roll. And uh, But that's part of its charm. But I think I saw the connection that he had with his dad and the land and it just resonated with my experience as a young person because I spent a lot of time with my father and grandfather going to my grandfather's farm. And I just was a little mute person in the back seat listening to all the stories because back then the, the storytelling was the entertainment. And I just, it was wonderful. And I just felt so privy to a to a private world that I would never have, and you know, the quieter I was, the more they would, you know, be free to talk about whatever. Well, when you asked me um, what this place meant to me, I believe that was the question, mm -hmm. and I told you about coming here for the first time and realizing the connection that Ed had to the land and to his father. I, um, I think that resonated with what I witnessed as a child uh, going to my grandfather's farm in central Kentucky. He had, he had grown up on a farm, but had pursued another occupation, as did my father. But that connection to the land was retained. And so he had what's called a, what they call it, he had a tenant on his farm. And he, he grew tobacco and had a big dairy operation. And it was it gave him great pleasure to go and supervise or uh, just check on the the uh, progress of things on the farm and we fished there and we rode through creeks that was before you had bridges and you just would drive your car through the creeks all over the farm and bumped around in the pastures with the cows and just I was I was the youngest uh, my older siblings were seven and nine years older, so I was I was really like an only child. So I was the only one left to do that with them. So I was often just a a passive 
presence in the back seat and witnessing uh, these men enjoy their land and hearing the stories that they would uh, tell each other about the people that we passed en route. And they, my grandfather knew all the families and all their family history. And had, he was a um, country doctor and he had taken care of them in times of hardship and been paid by them in chickens or eggs or whatever. And, uh, uh, and then he and my father would compare notes. My father was more of a more urbane and more of a more of an urbane doctor, and they helped each other in their practices. So anyway, mm -hmm. I think that when I that just is something that resonated with me, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to expand on that a bit. Yeah. For me personally, it was a, I think nature has always been a place of healing and comfort. I've always been comfortable outside. I prefer, I love being outside. I love living outside. And I think um, it's a place of healing. I think when I, uh, I, my first marriage failed and the disappointment of that, I spent a lot of time at Cumberland Island. And it was just by myself with my daughter who was Gosh, let's see, how old was she? Two and a half, three years old then. And I was riding her around on a bike on Cumberland, just uh, the two of us, and I think it was just a place to heal. And this place has been that way too. I mean, we all have disappointments, and uh, you know, later in life it became, I mean, knowing that it meant so much to my husband when he retired, we we came down here, but it meant as much to me. I mean, I was as much the motivator of coming to, to build a permanent home here as he was. And when he had a bad accident, and after that accident, for him to live his last days in a place that he loved was very beautiful for both of us. I'm, I'm a nurturer. I'm a nurse and uh, a gardener, so I saw a lot of potential for, for that here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's meant a lot to me in that way as well. Not that you can't do that in Brooklyn, New York, in your yeah. front yard as well. But It's hard to articulate what being connected to the land means to me. Um, talking with my mom and thinking about my own childhood, spending lots of time connected to nature and supporting animals and gardens um, and you know all of this wonderful wildlife is just a part of who we are as a family. As 50% of the global population these days lives in cities, my fear is that future generations are losing their connection to the land and kids don't understand where their food comes from or what is involved in making it. Um, so it's, it's really important that I bring my children back here to this special place so that they build a relationship with the land uh, and hopefully understand that there is reciprocity there. We support the land and the land supports us. And that is fundamental to being sustainable and, and understanding sustainability. It doesn't mean you have to have a farm. Um, you can find land with which you can build a connection almost anywhere. Um, it may take a little bit of journey or a little ingenuity, or you might have to focus on window boxes instead of earth uh, rooted to the ground. But it can be done. And I think it's much easier to understand and think about sustainability in farming when people have that connection to land and, and firsthand knowledge and visibility of what it takes to tend a farm and care for the animals and the plants that depend upon the land in the same way that we do.